correspondent Nicola Hill joins us now from London. Nicola, very, very concerning. What is COVID-19 doing to our brains? It is concerning, isn't it? Because it's actually showing that this virus is attacking more than just our lungs, which we were discussing yesterday. We did know that it did affect neurological symptoms because, of course, one of the symptoms is the loss of smell and the loss of taste. But what this research has shown is that it's having a much greater impact. Now, it is a small study. It involved 153 patients. And the people who observed this were psychiatrists and neuro neuro neurologists who all worked in various hospitals. Now, 125 of those patients were examined very closely and it showed that 77 of them had strokes. Now, 74 of them were over 60 and we do know that this virus has a more detrimental effect on people as they age. It also showed about 39 of them had confusion and other brain disorders. Now, nine of them were encephalopathy and seven of them were encephalitis. Now, that's an inflammation of the, of the brain lining. And I was talking to Professor Adrian Martineau this morning about something completely different, but he's an expert in respiratory and infectious diseases. And he reminded me that after the Spanish flu from the last century, there was an epidemic of something called encephalitis lethargica, which if anybody saw the film The Awakening or read the book Awakenings with Robert De Niro, it was about patients in a catatonic state and they had this particular disease. Ever since then, a lot of research has been going on looking to see whether it was the Spanish influenza that initiated this. No conclusions have been made at the moment, but that's why so much research is, be, is now looking at what effect COVID-19 is having on the brain. The other 29 people in this study had either psychosis or a psychiatric disorder. Now, the authors say they can't rule out whether they had this before and it was undiagnosed or whether the virus has caused it, and it's something that more research needs to be carried out. And there's also been a study published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in America that also has shown neurological disturbances in patients who've had COVID-19. And the authors of that study are investigating whether it's the virus itself that's causing it, because these are hospitalised patients again, or whether it's the cytokine storm from when the body's immune system goes haywire, whether that's having an impact on the brain. And these are things that still need to be researched much further on. It really does seem six months on uh, that we're learning so much about uh, what the coronavirus can do to our bodies. Um, and Nicola, you, you cover this every day nearly. What has surprised you the most, especially about uh, this recent uh, piece of findings? I, th I think this is very surprising um, and also something that I'm researching quite a lot at the moment is the numbers of people who, for whom the virus lasts so much longer. And it's because of this that the author of the um, study that's in the Alzheimer's disease journal, he says that we should be following people up. So after you re um, are released from hospital, um, as we were discussing yesterday, Maria, about people should have their lungs um, scanned after six months or so. Um, Dr. Fatuhi says that we should also have your brains checked, particularly if you have poor concentration or any lack of sleep, anything like that, because he doesn't know what the long term impacts this disease might be doing on some people. And we need to emphasise it's some people so that everyone doesn't panic. Um, but it might have a long term effect. And he said, is it, for example, could it lead to early Parkinson's disease or even multiple sclerosis? So his advice is really the advice that any of us take to protect our heart, to protect, to prevent strokes, exercising regularly, eating properly, don't being overweight. He says it's even more vital now that we continue to behave in that way. Nicola Hill, thank you so much for that. Thank you.